Grand Rising. Happy Wednesday. Wednesday is the day ruled by Mercury. And I love this. So I don't know what I did different today, but I can actually see people joining and what they're saying today. So I don't know what I did different. I think it's because I'm not using my DG and you're actually sitting on my altar. So we'll see how this goes. Namaste. <laughs> so Mercury actually rules Libra and Gemini. I'm sorry, um, Gemini and Virgo. Sorry, I was thinking Venus. So Mercury is the planet of perception. So on Wednesdays especially, be very aware of whatever your perception is. How do you perceive situations? And that not everyone perceives situations the same way you perceive situations. And so really be aware of those energies playing out. And like I said, like really learning your natal chart and your placements is one of the greatest life hacks. And um, really understanding yourself and helping you move through the human experience with way less effort. And so this is the altar spread for the collective today, the collective consciousness. Who is the collective? It's everyone, it's all of us, including myself. But this is the greatest percentage of the collective. And so these are the messages that show up for the collective. So the sacred geometry that showed up for today is the golden spiral. And spiral talks about the perfection of everything that is. So even down to the most minute design of everything, spirit, energy, becoming matter, there exists the golden spiral, this pi ratio. And to look at that, and that's how you realize how connected everything is, that everything is created first from that ratio and then becomes matter itself, okay? And so um, I always swore that whenever the spiral showed up in the spread that I would talk about this shell. And so this shell was a beautiful gift from my friend Doug who harvested this shell from the heart of Yarmini. And Yarmini is a mountain range in Colorado named after an Indian chief. And so on that range, there exists a, a remote space called the heart of Yarmini. And so if you look, if you Google images of Yarmini, you'll see that there exists in the center of the range, this space called the heart of Yarmini, and it is not um, visited by man. There are actually no trails going into the heart of Yarmini. And so Doug actually bushwhacked his way into the heart of Yarmini, braving mountain lions, and also saying that he saw fresh kills, so they knew they were active, but at least fed, <laughs> and slept with his firearm on his chest but when he got to the heart of Yarmini he saw these shells these are millions of years old if you think about how long it had been before that range was actually covered by water and there exist these seashells in the top of this mountain range it's very amazing and so the golden spiral <laughs> coming through this spread but also the perfection of that that gift and that thoughtfulness really raises the bar and i hope it also makes you consider and realize um, your premier facets your energy and your time and are you spending it wisely that currency and sharing it with those who actually are in equal exchange or revere it the way that they should. And so the golden spiral wants you to think about your connectedness, your inception, 
on the very smallest and minute level of creation, there exists this golden ratio within you and with all within all things that were created into matter. And so Pachimama showed up. Pachimama is Gaia, it's Mother Earth. And it showed up in the reverse. So in the upright position, Pachimama talks about um, our connectedness to the host that holds us, right? Because we are guests here. We are not humans. We are spirits having a human experience. And so Pachimama being our surrogate mother of sorts. And so in the reverse, it talks about this innate feeling of being rejected, being cast out of the Garden of Eden. And so this deep soul pain of being motherless and so do you feel on some level that you are an orphan that you have been forsaken that you are not um, mothered or nurtured and so Pachimama in the reverse talks about that energy really getting in touch with that you know the golden spiral and Pachimama in reverse together really want you to be aware of how do you feel as far as support systems go and how old are the pains and traumas that you're holding on to it could be ancient just like literally soul pain creating a cell memory in your human and did you design childhood experiences to echo that so that you could actually heal it heal it not only for yourself but for the collective because what we do for one we do for all so working on our own shit is literally the most powerful thing that you can do to direct change outside of you and um i was asked once by um a man he said do you even make a difference and so I looked at him and I knew that that question was coming from his ego. I had to stay in my consciousness. And I said, you know, I don't even know. How can you know? How can you know? And so the ego really wants you to think that you know. And that's returning to our roots, really owning that we don't know shit. And experiencing our experiences so that we can get back to that true wisdom of surrender thank you <laughs> um these are just readers but they got a lot of pizzazz my girl cindy had them so thank you for that and thank you king blessings to you as well and so the the message of the golden spiral and pachimama in reverse this is the tool of the day and i love that this showed up because i literally just had this conversation this morning um so a lot of times i'll answer my messages in the morning and there was a post I made yesterday about staying in your heart to become most conscious, even when you're faced with adversity and polarity. That's how you really know and can test your own level of consciousness. That's true consciousness, right? And so the childhood, and he said, well, how do you stay in your heart when there's such ignorance? How do you continue to love them? It really presses on those loathing parts of me. And so I said, do you loathe a child for their ignorance? Ignorance is not knowing, right? You don't loathe a child for their ignorance. The loathing is actually from their unwillingness to be curious, to actually shut the fuck up and say, I don't know. I, I may not know what they're talking about, so let me really expand my awareness and listen. That's really where your loathing comes from. Their unwillingness to be in the unknowing. So if you think about that, that also leads into the control, right? When you say they're controlling. Controlling is always the energy of fear. 
And when you want to control something, hello, Isaac, when you want to control something, it's because you want to assure the outcome. And really that comes from a place of fear. If I can assure the outcome, then I'll feel safe and I won't be afraid anymore. So really, why would you not offer compassion to someone like that? Why would you not offer compassion to someone who comes from a place of ignorance? It truly, the loathing energy and the anger and the rage and the frustration comes from dealing with someone who is completely unwilling to be curious. And really, that's a huge piece of what is broken in adults right now, is that unwillingness to be curious, that unwillingness to really expand their awareness and their mind, and it is based in fear. And so I love that the inner child stone um, showed up today because really the whole purpose it, our whole purpose in the human experience is to return to unity consciousness. And unity consciousness is recognizing that we are all one, right? And so to embody that wholeness, we have to return to our original state of dignity. Right, it's not necessary. So thank you for asking that question. Why is it necessary to know the outcome prior to facing the situation? It absolutely is not. The whole point of surrender is that we're being taught to trust again, that everything is designed for us, not against us. It's not punishment, nothing is punishment. Everything is to elevate us. But returning to that original state of dignity of, of the child, this is, the, the child state where you can get food all over you and you never for a moment consider yourself unlovable, right? It's making a mess of everything because you are diving in and discovering everything and being curious. That is the child state that we need to return to. But a huge percentage have been, um, traumatized as children and so there's still this child inside of us that now wants to know the outcomes that is so scared that you are actually adults who are still children right and playing out these fear scenarios and still trying to heal from shit that they chose in their childhood experiences so really getting reconnected is what removes that wedge because that's how the ego um, became the the impediment that judgment all of those processes wanting to control and wanting to judge and that loathing all of that comes from ego and when you hear spiritual teachers saying, oh, we must embrace our ego. We must integrate our ego. And I've seen other spiritual teachers saying, oh, all of those people saying to get rid of the ego, um, that they're rejecting a part of themselves. I'm sorry, but the ego is not me. The ego is also not a part of you. So it's not something that needs to be integrated. Our trauma, is a part of ourself. It does need to be integrated. The ego is not. Get that straight. I think that those spiritual teachers are confusing intellect with ego. We were birthed with three parts, an earth suit, this is the skin, right? Our intellect and our soul, but the soul is the real us. But the intellect and the earth suit are only tools of the human experience. But the ego definitely is an impediment. It is that which creates the wedge for love. And we are pure frequency of love in our divine state. And the ego most definitely is the disease. You wanna know what the real pandemic is, it's ego. Thank you, brother Douglas. I am purifying. I'm trying. <laughs>
and question is so basically you mean doing everything with an open heart and open mind without fearing the consequences of course being optimistic absolutely yes that a million times yes open heart and when we have an open heart it's literally impossible for us to judge because it's the heart that allows us to see everything as ourself and so judgment is a construct of corruption and that's the ego the ego is corruption it's a corrupt state of being and it's not serving it's not um you can never elevate anything that comes out of the ego and i teach every wednesday night here locally and there's one gent that sits in my class and wants to have this conversation literally every wednesday and i'm like so over it but um you know he thinks that the the ego that there's a good use for it and uh, i'm just no there's i don't care how you try to sugarcoat it there is no good use for the ego absolutely none it is good to be aware of it so that that way when it shows up you can call yourself out and start to chip away at where you are allowing that to creep in and poison your experiences because really that's what it is it's insidious and it is poison and it's not to be integrated so when you raise your vibrations you raise your awareness with an open heart and mind absolutely douglas crow wolf yes absolutely <laughs> so the tool is rotocrosite and that will help you connect with that original state of dignity which is before the ego was even constructed right our ego was constructed by good boy bad boy good girl bad girl being domesticated like dogs that's really the corruption of the human experience yes they do Douglas and that would be the proper use of intellect thank you <laughs> so Hotso the beauty of the Navajo way I love this as the culmination of today's spread because it talks about um, that you are a divine child of Gaia. So the Pachimama in reverse saying that you need to heal that trauma that you believe yourself cast out of the Garden of Eden is absolutely an untruth. And Holtso is saying you are a child of Gaia and that you are never alone that you will be supported, nurtured, loved in this experience. What's the best way to spread generosity and kindness across the world so that we can spread love and prosperity in the mankind? Honestly, love yourself. <laughs> so when you love yourself, and I'm not talking about, I mean, there's many facets of self-love, right? It's not just hair and nails. But honestly, the highest level of self-love is not editing. Being radically your authentic self in every environment. And when you do that, you raise your vibration so high and embody love that it is infectious. And it gives others permission to do that as well because really that's the point returning to unity consciousness the paradox of that is being able to embody your own magnificence right and so when people say oh well i'm not i'm not like you i can't do this and i'm like oh my god please don't be like me <laughs> and i want you to be like you my whole purpose is to really inspire others to remember who the fuck they are and to embody their own truth because when you can do that it inspires others to do it 
and others to do it. It's like that old commercial, right? I'm probably really telling my age now and they told two friends and they told two friends and they told two friends. <laughs> and then you see all the squares on, and I haven't watched TV in more than a decade, so I don't even know if they made a new version of that commercial or not, but really that's the domino effect. And energy is so contagious. Unfortunately, the most contagious energy is negative energy. So it's really important for us to stay unwaveringly in our heart center. And that's why it's so important, the self-love, because self-love is also like allowing yourself to decompress from those heavy experiences that, that are happening in the collective from all the pollution. So that is the spread today. And thank you for supporting that. Um, any questions while I'm on this live? And Spirit told me to start showing my face. This is really uncomfortable for me, but thank you all for being so sweet. <laughs> okay, no questions. So I am going to say thank you. I love you. And thank you for sharing your most valuable commodity with me, your time and your energy. I appreciate you. I really do. And I am sorry for any disharmony that I myself have created. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. And thank you for this opportunity. If everything is going positive and going on and on, should we fear the negative? Never. That's part of the integration. Nothing is good or bad. It just is. Remember, everything is happening for you, not to you. Thank you, Quran. <laughs> so, I love you. Thank you.